Welcome to the unofficial ACIguide.com. I'm Jody. Today we're going to be looking at ACI service chaining using policy-based redirect for east-to-west firewall inspection. Let's take a look. All right, so now we're going to take a look at policy-based redirect. And this is, uh, you've heard of service graphs, you've heard of integration with firewalls and things like this. This is an unmanaged service graph, which means we're not managing the configuration on the firewall. What we're doing is we're stitching specific traffic through the firewall to be inspected stately. So this diagram on, uh, on, on the white paper for PBR does a really nice job of, of visually showing you what, what it is that we're doing. So we've got an EPG web on the left, we've got an EPG app on the far right, and we're gonna stitch certain traffic. Now we could stitch all traffic through there, but what we're gonna demonstrate is we can stitch just a specific amount of traffic or a specific type of traffic through the firewall uh, to be inspected and then thrown back into ACI. So a couple of things to remember here with, with policy-based redirect is ACI in our case is the gateway for all of our devices. So we are intercepting layer three traffic in flight, redirecting it through a firewall. It's being inspected, it's being thrown back out into ACI where it continues to flow. So Javid is gonna kind of take us through this one and show us how we do this inside of ACI. Javid, take it away. All right, good morning. Uh, so here, uh, we're gonna demonstrate PBR. So uh, right now I have two EPGs. Uh, on the left side, I have EPG 102, and then on the right side, I have EPG 103. So from EPG 102, we're gonna try SSH to EPG 103, which, has, which goes through the firewall, anything else, and go to the normal contract. So in this uh, diagram, as you see, the, the two BDs in the middle, think of it as more of a service BD or transient link. So when the packet, let's say from the left side, he wants to touch the EPG on the right side, he's gonna send his, uh, his you know, IP to his default gateway, which is you know sitting on the leaf. And then based on the contract, we tell the, you know, we tell, send the packet to this next hub, which is in this case, uh, when the packet comes in here, uh, he's going to send it to 192.168.3.1, which is the firewall. Then in, in, inside the firewall, we do our routing. In my case, I have a static routing, which from here, we send the packet up to, to the leaf, and the leaf knows how to send the packet to the EPG app in this case. And then return traffic, vice versa. When the package comes into the lift, we PBR that to the firewall, and firewall knows how to route it back to to uh, the left side. So let me show you my configuration first, so you can get an idea what what I'm doing. If I go to my application profile, I have two EPGs, Net 102 EPG, which is a consumer and net 103 is provided. So if I go to my <clears throat> contract, as you can see, I have a contract allow, name of the contract is allow SSH, and on the consuming side, and if I go to net 103, I have provide, allow SSH and provide so let's, let me show you what we've done for the, on the networking side. So the first thing we've done is that I'm going to create two bridge domains, which is in my case, I call it firewall dash inside and firewall dash outside. So if you look at, at the diagram again one more time, so this is the, my outside. And, and one thing I want to point out that it took me a little while to figure out is when we're setting up this PBR and we're talking about external, internal, outside, inside, we're not talking about the bridge domains that are connected to Net 102 and Net 103. These are special BDs that you're exactly. using to sandwich the traffic, right? That's right. So if I go back here, one of the things that, that I want to let you know on it, 
is on it. Let's say, and these BDs, this special BD, there is no EPG associated with it. It's, there's just a BD. And one thing we need to make sure is that we check this, uh, there's a checkbox. We want to make sure we are not learning from data plane because otherwise we might bypass the firewall. So this is something that has to be checked. And on the L3 configuration, as you see, I have a 1099.98.1 on my side, and then dot two is my firewall side. So this is my inside firewall, and this is my outside firewall, which is 1099.99.1. So once we create these two service BDs, next thing we want to do is there's something else we can do before we start configuring. So you go to your policy. Hey, real quick, Javid, on, uh, I just want to highlight, on that firewall outside, you're also disabling IP data plane learning on, on both of those exactly. service BDs, right? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Make sure we disable IP data plane okay. learning. So we don't want to, you know, we want everything goes through firewall. We don't want to bypass the firewall. So and then you go to the policies protocol. And then uh, on this L4 through L7 redirect, I created two policies here. One is a, well, I, I call it firewall inside and firewall outside. As you can see here, this is, let me click here, so you can see I've got, this is a, the next hub is the IP address of the firewall and its MAC address. So once the packet comes to the lease and, and we look at the contract, it matches the contract we send it to this next hub. So, so we do, we have created two uh, redirect policies. And then once you create the policies, then we can go create our L4776. The service, you know, the service graph. You go to services. In my case, let me go to my devices. So I've created a service graph. I'm calling it firewall dash PDR. This is based on a physical firewall. I have an ASA firewall, and and go to means a router firewall. And I have four, two interfaces on inside, two on the outside. Uh, so one of the interfaces connected to the active firewall, one is connected to the standby firewall. If you look at my diagram, so I have MAML 11 and MAML 12. MAML 11 is active, MAML 12 is standby. So that's why you see two interfaces. I call it inside and inside one, outside and outside one. And then we associated these these interfaces to a VLAN. So my outside is VLAN 104 and inside VLAN 103. Then uh, let me show you on how we create the graph. I'm just going to try. I'm going to create a new one, but I'm not going to submit it so you can see. Very easy. We then create, create L4 to L7 template. I just call it test for right now. And, and since I've already created my device, I just grab, you know, bring it here. This is a router, and this is a redirect. Next, you go down here, and you click submit. Once you do that, uh, it creates you that. A template, then this is already created one here. I just create apply service graph. So now the our consuming side is our EPG 102 providing side is EPG 103. And now here is the, the contract information. So you can you can send everything through firewall using PBR, or let's say you want to send certain traffic 
through firewall and certain through normal contract, you can do that too. So if I want to just, just say allow SSH here, SSH, and I uncheck this, then I can create my filter here. And then Then, based on IP and protocol is TCP. And then destination port, I do this 22, 22, update this. And then next, this is a piece that is, it glues everything together. So now, we know are consuming EPG and providing EPG. Now we're going to attach these to our service BDs. So here's our BD here. We call it a firewall outside. And this is the one that BD we, we created and we showed you a while ago is the, with the data plane learning is, is off and is IP address and a basic BD with no EPG though. So then, and then we associate with the redirect policy. Okay. So the name is important here, so we don't get confused. And then is a, our consuming side, and then on the on the inside BD, we select our BD service BD and redirect policy. That's it. And then we click on finish. So I'll show you the finished product here. So this is my firewall. And if I go down here, uh, deploy it. Service graph. And you can see here, I've got device. This is my device firewall dash PBR. Is the PBR, we using PBR. And then this is my service BD. And this is my redirect policy, is a consuming. And this is my inside BD, my redirect policy, and is a provider. So one other thing I want to show you here under contract. Under, so we allow SSH. As you see on the see right here, this 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 filter allow SSH is using L4 to L7 service class. So and then if I click on permit any here under subject is not associated with service class. So so we only want to sh uh, allow SSH going through. Uh, using PBR. So what, let me show you the firewall now. So my firewall is Mammoth 11. This is the context. I created a context called PBR. That's what we show run here. Can see my inside 1099.98.2 and the HCI side is that one. And here's my standby router, and this is outside. And here my ACF, I'm allowing SSH. So I go down here, and this is my static router. We get to 102 and 103. The next hub is this. BD, that service BD we created. So, and then I do show connection. There's no connection right now. So let me go back here. To my, so this is my net, one of my net 102, which is connected to EPG 102. Here we go. Port group. Tenant prod, 
This is my application profile, and this is my EPG, which is, you know, is learned through VMM domain. So if I go to my net 102, the credit address. Part of a 192.168.102.102. I'm going to try SSH to, to 103 EPG, which is the providing side. I logged in. Let me go to my firewall. So, connection. You can see that uh, we have established the uh, SSH true file from 102 to 103. Very nice. Now, if I go back here to my uh, to my uh, grid here, and I go back, you will see that the connection is gone. Connection. So now, if I go back, let's say I'm going to try to do ping. One three. Ping is going to a normal contract. So if I go back here to connection, as you see, the ping is not going through firewall. It's just going through right. the contract. Right. So you have flexibility to control what you can go through PBR. You can do everything or you can you know, be selected. Right. So if you wanted all traffic east to west from 102 to 103 and vice versa to go through the firewall, you would have changed the filters on your contract and said all traffic, and that would have routed all of the traffic through the firewall regardless, correct? Exactly. So, okay. Can we can we make that change live and just show that? Because I think that's pretty powerful. This, this, this allows you to be very granular with how you're sending the traffic or send it all. Add, if I add, let's see if I can do. Uh, I have a permit any part any independent filter. Any. Yeah, so it's so anything I'd be unspecified, yep. Permit, submit. Let me check. So go back here. Go on. Yeah, let's see if it's working now. I bet it's not working because it's going through the firewall, but it's being blocked on the firewall. Yeah. Do you have okay. a, you probably have a filter only allowing okay. SSH. Let me see, let me go show around with my. There you go. There you go. Allow, let's see. The permit. ICMP. Any, any. There, there you go. And now if you go back to your VM, it's going to be magically working. That's great, great. man. That's awesome. Great. This, okay, so, so this. No, I mean, this is powerful. This shows exactly how we can take traffic, all traffic and route it. Even though ACI is the layer three gateway, we can take traffic with a contract, identify it, shove it through a firewall or other stateful device. Or, I mean, we could also redirect it to a load balancer or to an IPS IDS. It doesn't have to be a firewall. We're, we're redirecting it through it to a device. 
uh, and yes, where we can do it collectively, all traffic, some traffic. So very powerful job, and thank you so much. Thank you, Lewis. You're welcome. No problem. Thanks for watching the video today. If you'd like more ACI how-tos, design guides, and best practices, check us out on the web at unofficialaciguide.com or on YouTube.